Hi, it's Penny, and as usual, I'm here to talk about some bookish things. Specifically, today, we're going to put together my TBR for August, September. Oh my god, is it September already? It's September. We're going to put together our TBR for that. Now, as usual, I will be using my TBR machine website, which gives me random reading prompts, and I'll be using those to put together 3,000 pages to read during the month of September. Now, during my last few TBR machine videos, I've had more and more library books, and I always start by taking those away from the 3,000 pages. This month, so far, I've only got one library book to read. So this is the only one we need to take out first. I've been trying really hard not to put holds on library books, except for ones that I'm like super excited about. And most of those are new releases, so we're waiting for them to actually be released. But this one I put on my hold list a long time ago when I watched the Netflix movie. I think just after it came out, so that was quite a while ago. If you don't know, it follows this woman as people start seeing these creatures and whenever they see them they go crazy and start killing people and killing themselves. And so everyone's trying to like block off their vision whenever they go outside so that they won't see whatever these creatures are. I was a little bit disappointed in the ending and from what I've heard the book isn't going to give me much more but still I wanted to read the book. I was about 60th in the queue that's why it's taken so long to get through. So this is 291 pages so we'll take that out from our 3000 and then we will get out the calculator to do that maths because I'm not doing maths in my head today. So we've got 2709 pages of books left to choose. We're gonna open up the TBR machine. I didn't prepare for this video at all so I haven't opened it up yet. So normally I like to close off all my tabs so you guys can't see them all but let's just, I've got eight tabs, that's not like awful. So the first prompt that I have is to read a fantasy book. If you know my bookshelves you know this is going to be easy for me although actually hard because part of why I use the TBR machine is that it limits my choices and that makes it easier to choose. Choosing a fantasy book when there's so many on my shelves that I want to read is actually going to be hard to pick which one because there's too many. <sighs> no, I think I know what I'm going to pick. I keep putting The Painted Man by Peter V. Brett on my TBR for the month and then not getting to it. So surely if I keep putting it on my TBR at some point I'll actually get to it. Surely. So we're going to put this on the TBR. I don't know much about it other than some kind of demons. Everyone says this series is really great so I'm hoping that I will love it too. Unfortunately it is 540 pages so that's quite long but it shouldn't really matter if I'm still reading 3,000 pages overall. One thing I need to watch out is for books that are big like this way or this way. This is just regular size so it should be fine. I should be able to get to it. Maybe I'll make sure to prioritize it this time. Okay, so the second prompt that we'll be going for is read a book that you think you will rate five stars. So a five star prediction. Maybe I could have used this for that. Anyway, five stars. Let's go find one. So I picked out a few options, but I think I know which one I'm going to go for. So the first one I picked out was The Dark Vault by Victoria Schwab. I love Victoria Schwab, so there's a good chance this will be five stars, but I do know this is one of her older works and a lot of people say it's not as good. That's a bit of a worry. I did also just pick up Never World Wait by Marisha Pessel, which I know a lot of people really loved, and it's a beautiful book cover, so that's a possibility. But then I remembered I've got Legion, The Many Lives of Stephen Leeds by Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson often gets into that five star category for me, so I think this is the one that I'm most likely to give a five star, so I'm going to go with this one. I've also just remembered that I am considering doing the Tome Infinity readathon, and for that I would need a lot of science fiction. Especially they're trying to do this thing where you pick science fiction from different continents, so I should try to pick as much science fiction as possible so that if I decide to do that readathon, I've got some good options in my existing TBR. So this book is 340 pages. So that means we're up to 1,175 pages and we've got 1,825 left to pick. So the next prompt is to read a book set in a school or a university. So for this one, I think I'm going to go with Avril Lavigne's Make Five Wishes. So this is an Avril Lavigne graphic novel that I picked up at a book fair last month. 
Um, I'm quite excited to read it. It does say on the synopsis on Goodreads that the main character doesn't fit in at school, so I guess that means that it is set at school. I think this will be a quick read and I'm interested to see what it's all about, especially because there is this weird little monster guy. I think I'm going to love him. So this is what we're going to read. How many pages is this? Graphic novels are often quite hard to tell because they don't like to tell you. It doesn't tell you anywhere in here but Goodreads does say that it's 152 pages. Also for myself I normally have a rule that graphic novels are half the actual page numbers just because they're so quick to read. So 152, half of that is about 75. Let's not do exact maths because my brain doesn't like it. So that means we're up to 1250 pages. Let's keep going. The next prompt is to read a book with orange on the cover. For once, my Rambo shelves might actually help me. Let me go have a look in my orange section. So I have two options. One is The Skies of Pern by Anne McCaffrey, which is the next book I need to read in the Dragons of Pern series. I will note, this is one of those ones I was talking about where it's quite tall and wide, so compared to a more normal book, and even this is a bigger book as well. Um, this other one that I've got is Fire and Shadow by T.G. Ayer. This is a New Zealand author that I picked up their book quite a long time ago and I feel bad about not having read this. And because I've had a few like stressful readathon reading months, I think I'm actually going to go for the easier one, this one, which will also make my conscience feel nice. And this one I'm just going to put aside for now because I know this will take me ages to get through. It's not the funnest reading style. I want to continue the series, especially to the part where Anne McCaffrey's son takes over the writing because I want to see what kind of a difference that makes. And I used to really love this series, so I I want to continue it for the nostalgia and like for loyalty, but not right now. So that means we'll be reading Fire and Shadow. I don't know much about this. Some girl that has some kind of fire power something to do with gods. I mean it is called the Hand of Kali novel so I assume it's got something to do with Kali which is an Indian god that I do find very intriguing. So I will be reading this and it is, it has a lot of ads in the back, uh, 361 pages which puts us up to 1611 pages so let us continue. Read a book that will make you happy. Oh that's nice. Thanks past Penny for making a nice prompt. Do I actually have anything like that on my shelves? So for this I think I'm gonna go with Maui and Other Maori Legends by Peter Gossage. This is like a bind up of a bunch of books that I used to see around all the time when I was a child just telling different legends of Maui. I think the one that most people will remember is where Maui captures the sun or like these were very popular books in New Zealand. I think they were in like pretty much every school so a lot of New Zealand kids will have read these books or at least New Zealand kids my age will have. And also Maori mythology is something I really want to learn more about. I just know I'll get really nostalgic feels reading these legends as well as maybe learning something. And I meant to read this once before but I never got to it so I'm gonna read this one. How many pages am I gonna count this as? Who knows? It's 208 pages long but like most of the pages don't have many words on them I, so but I mean I do want to take the time to appreciate the different art so I think we'll go with 100 pages why not. So that puts us up to 1711 pages and our next prompt will be read a book that is a retelling. I should have gone with this. Although is that really a retelling? Probably. Let's see what else we can find. I think this is a bit of a stretch but I also think it's the best one that I have on my shelves. So I'm gonna go with Chinese Cinderella by Adeline Yen Ma. So this is a story about this girl in China whose family considered her bad luck and she was made to feel unwanted all her life. I believe it's based on her real childhood but possibly elaborated on. Um, I don't know that it's exactly a retelling of Cinderella but there's some parallels, hence the name. So we're gonna go with this. I do actually think this is quite a, a depressing story but oh well. 
So this is 225 pages. So we're up to 1936 pages, getting closer. So the next one is to read a book with LGBTQIA plus representation. Now I know that my shelves are not great for this. Something I would like to improve in the future, but since I'm trying not to buy too many books, kind of hard. Also, I've been thinking about it. I think because I'm not really interested in romance, it means it's often hard to tell which books have this representation just because as soon as a book is mentioning someone's sexuality in the synopsis that's suggesting that it's relevant to the story, which means there's probably romance. Unless of course it's a book that's about identity, but again identity is something that as an older person I'm not as interested in. Like I know my own identity and I'm happy for other people to have whatever identity they want. Sometimes I like to learn a little bit more about it, but it's not something I really actively go out and look for. So I think that's why, like I suspect that there is a lot of LGBT rep on these shelves, but I just don't know which ones they are. But I'll see if I can find one where it says that up front. I do actually know some of them on there and they're not first books in a series which makes that very hard. Honestly I thought that uh, Wizard of Bagora by Tanya Huff might be a good option and then I found a review saying that this is the only book by Tanya Huff they've read that doesn't have gay characters in it so I guess not. But what I did find is Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel, which I just picked up recently. I mentioned it just before. So I found a review saying that this has a gay character. Interestingly enough, that review seemed to be viewing that in a negative light. Which, why? Anyway, I'm excited to read this and I'm excited to manage to squish this into my TBR. And the fact that this is my newest purchase and it does have LGBT rep is promising? I think so. So I don't really know what this is about except that a bunch of friends are in a car crash and then they get stuck in some kind of time loop. I really like time loops, that's what sold this on me. And also just the beautiful cover and the fact that everyone says that they enjoyed it. And this one is 324 pages, so not that long. And that puts us up to 2260 pages. So Another prompt. Next is to read a book with a person on the cover. Hopefully this one will be a bit easier. Oh, I'm tempted. I'm holding this one right here. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Okay, no. I was thinking about Wizard of the Grove, but I don't really want to add any more dense fantasy onto my TBR just because I'm trying to have a more relaxed September. So instead I'm going to go for Third Degree by Tanya Roxborough. So Tanya Roxborough was my sixth form drama teacher and I found out that she'd released this sometime after I left school and then I found this at a book fair last month. So I'm excited to pick it up and just it's exciting when someone you know writes a book, right? I believe the story of this is something about a young girl finding the diary of her dead mother. Something. I don't really know. It's, it's my drama teacher. And it's only 153 pages, so it's pretty short. Hopefully it'll be a quick read. Also, if I pick lots of short books, I'll be able to get that overall number of books on my physical TBR shelf down a lot more. It's a little bit of a hack, a little bit of a cheat but whatever works. So our next prompt is to read a book with food on the cover. I'm getting a lot of cover prompts this time. Food on the cover might also be hard to find. Okay, so this is a bit of a stretch, but it's the best I could do. Uh, on Phoenix Rising, which is the first book of the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences by Philippa Ballantyne, this guy here is drinking a cup of tea. Tea isn't exactly food, but it's food adjacent. And as far as I can tell, no other books on my shelf have food on the cover, or at least none of the unread books do. This book I am really excited to read. I don't really know much about it except that Pip Ballantyne and Tim Morris are both New Zealanders, although they're living in the States now, and this is some kind of steampunk fantasy series. It's the first book. I want to try it. It has just started raining so heavy. So if you can hear that, sorry. So this is 402 pages. 
And that puts us to 2,815 pages, so we'll probably just be adding one more book, which I think is good because that pile is big enough. The next prompt is to read a book with blue on the cover. Honestly, I only seem to get cover prompts today, which is not what I normally get. So the two options I have is A Nancy Boys by Neil Gaiman and also The First Fifteen Lives of Harry August. I do think that even though I want to read this, I know I struggle with Neil Gaiman's writing a little bit, so I think September is not the right month for this. This one I did read a while ago on audiobook, but there were some parts of the audiobook that I found quite frustrating and I thought that I would probably enjoy the story more in physical form so we're gonna try it like that. It's about this guy who every time he dies he gets reborn in his life again and he still has all the memories from his previous life so he's living his life over and over again and then on about his 12th life I think this young girl comes to him on his deathbed and says the world is ending it's getting sooner and sooner we need to figure figure out how to stop it, send the message back. So I really like the concept. I don't at this point remember which things I didn't like about it, but I, I think that means it is time for the reread that I was always planning to do. So I'm going to read this. Uh, it has 420 pages. Didn't I just have one with that many pages? Oh no, 402. So that means we've hit 3,235 pages that's the limit. So these were all the books that I'm going to be reading this month. Let me show them to you. Ooh. So these would be all the books that'll be on my TBR, 3,000 ish pages. I actually quite like this selection just because it would let me actually get my physical TBR shelf down, which I haven't been doing very well with since I've been reading so many library books. There's also some books in here that I'm quite excited about. So hopefully, it will be a good reading month, not only in terms of getting through the books, but also in terms of enjoying the books, which is also very important. So the one last thing that I do like to do in these TBR videos is to mention all the audiobooks that I have coming up. Now there is still a bit of August left, so I'm not sure which ones I'm going to get through, but we'll do our best to guess. So I would guess that at the start of September I will be listening to Golden Sun by Pierce Brown which is the second book in the Red Rising series. I listened to that audiobook recently. To be honest I wasn't entirely engaged but there were some interesting parts so it convinced me to continue so we'll see how it goes. It's basically a science fiction fantasy about the lower class taking over power from the upper class. A lot of war and fighting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I also have Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. I waited uh, like six months on the hold list for this, so I better get to it before it returns itself. I believe it's an audiobook um, about a doctor telling you some stuff that will make you appreciate your life or perceive your life differently. Six months later, I don't really remember. I also have the audiobook for Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. A lot of people have said that this book is really good, and I think the third book in the trilogy just came out. Some kind of murder mystery. A girl is at a school learning how to be a detective and also trying to solve the murder that happened at this school. Um, for, the murder happened ages ago but now there are new murders happening. I did hear that the audiobook is quite good which is why I put the hold on that audiobook. Then I also have Sea Witch Rising by Sarah Henning. So this is the second book, the sequel to Sea Witch which I am just finishing as I film this. So it will be good to get into the sequel so soon after having read the first book although it has been very romance heavy so it hasn't been my favourite. But I'm willing to take more of a risk with my audiobooks because they take less effort to read than a physical book. Just because I can listen to them while I do other things. Then I also have Stronger, Faster and More Beautiful by Arwen Ellis Dayton. Now this is one that I was meant to read a while ago but my loan ran out and I had to return it. So we'll try again. Again, I don't really know what this one is about. I just know Rachel Marie said it was quite good. Um, I believe like science fiction, maybe even short stories about like genetic modification and that kind of thing. Uh, I also have Getting Things Done by David Allen. I talked about this last time I think, but uh, my hold only just came through. 
This is a book about productivity. I've read it before. I'll read it again. It's just good to reread and motivate yourself and encourage yourself to kind of sort out your productivity system or at least that's what I enjoy about it. I also have the audiobook for Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and Maguire. I just thought with the new book coming out early next year it would be good to reread the series and I haven't listened to the audiobooks so I thought why not give that format a try for that story. And I also have The Devil's Thief by Lisa Maxwell which is the sequel to The Last Magician which I read recently. I haven't heard the best things about it but I'm hopeful that I will still really enjoy it. And honestly, that's a million audiobooks, so if I get through all of those, I'll be very impressed with myself. So do let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about today. Do you think I'm going to like them? Did you like them? Or are they books that you're hoping to pick up soon too? Otherwise, I hope that you're having a really wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.